I'm obviously the first person with the Neuralink implant. Woohoo! Um, <laughs> it, it's life changing. It really is. It makes it makes being. It's going to sound kind of crazy, but it makes being paralyzed really not that bad. Just thinking about someone, say, breaking their neck or dislocating their neck, going into a hospital. And two days later, like getting surgery, getting an implant, something, two days later, walking out, like that is just, it's such a real possibility now. And that it makes me like so happy that other people don't have to go through this. It's everything I could have ever asked for and to be a part of it and to be helping in some way, to be able to be useful in some way, it, it completely changed how I live. I'm waking up at six, seven in the morning, just excited for the next day. And that's something that I never thought would happen to me ever again. It's more than I could ever ask for. So thank you guys. Thank you so much. Welcome everyone, welcome. I think we all know what this All Hands is gonna be about. We have a very, very special guest. I've been calling him VVIP. You all know him as P1. You will know more about him today. And also for them to just share the journey that they've gone through and just, just sheer excitement for sharing all the progress so far with you all. So I guess without further ado, I am going to introduce who you guys all know as Participant One or P1 onto the stage. So please, 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 please welcome, welcome with a big round of applause. Hello, humans. I wanted to start this out with a joke, but I didn't think you lesser beings would understand. <laughs> so um, I'll just hop right in. My name's Nolan. I'm obviously the first person with the Neuralink implant. Um, <laughs> it's, thank you, thank you. It's, uh, it's been a wild ride. I think more than anything, I'm just impressed with all the work y'all have done. I mean, I did very little. I let them, you know, cut open my skull and put something in my brain and that's about it. I was asleep for all of it, so it was super easy. Y'all have been doing work for years and I'm just so impressed with everyone I've met. And I don't know, it's just, it's amazing. It's amazing being able to tour everything and see, you know, behind the scenes. It's just, it's fantastic. I can't express enough how awesome all of y'all are and how much this is going to change the world. I mean, I can already see it. It's been a month. I think a month was like two days ago. And how much my life has changed and how, how much it's improved, not just my life, but the implant and the work that y'all are doing. It's been, it's been fantastic. And I can only imagine where this is gonna go. And y'all are really doing just the coolest thing in the world. I'm so happy to be a part of it. I feel so blessed to be a part of it. I, like I said, I didn't do a whole lot to get selected. I just was, happened to uh, align with everything that y'all wanted, that the study wanted. And really it was, it was luck, basically. And at any point, Today, uh, if y'all want to come talk to me, please come on up. I am basically like all of y'all, just with a bit of hardware in my in my skull, a bit more compute power, and that's about it. So come on up, say hi. I'll ask you about how you got into this because I'm fascinated to hear all of your origin stories is what I've been calling it. And yeah, I think that's about it. Good work, everyone. So Nolan is a very impressive person but I want to take just one moment before bragging on his behalf about all the work that he's done over the past month to also acknowledge his mother, his father, and his friend here in the front row. I've spent probably eight hours a day plus at their home the last sort of month-ish. And I just want to acknowledge that none of this would happen without them. I mean, literally none of it. And that's, it's a team effort the whole way. So just if I could have one round of applause for Nolan, but also their family. Yeah, and then I want to just talk briefly. It's sort of impossible task to try to summarize the quantity of data and the impact that Nolan and his family have had over the last month, not just on Neuralink, I want to be clear, not just on Neuralink, but on the entire industry and what it means for the field in general. So I have a pretty impossible job of trying to summarize with a few statistics what that looks like, just to give you a sense of the kind of crazy absurd amount of data and progress that we've made in the last month. So the first is we've done literally only 12 BCI sessions so far. We've done five days a week, eight hours a day. And for those of you who have worked in this field before, you know that this is not the usual thing to happen. If you have experience with BrainGate or previous clinical trials, it's typically a couple days a week for a couple hours. And by Monday morning, at usually around 11 a.m., we usually surpass what the normal is in terms of data collection for a week. The second thing I want to acknowledge is the amount of learning that we've taken away from those sessions. And so if you actually, if you look at the next bullet point there, we've taken, 
I asked Sammy to compute this, 271 pages of notes over those 12 BCI sessions. And it's to the degree that Google Docs actually doesn't load that document anymore. And we had to start splitting it up day by day. And it's, it's actually not just about, you know, it just wouldn't happen with anyone. I want to emphasize that. Nolan has a very unique ability to give us useful comments on what needs to change to make our product better. His parents, his friends have given us same, similar comments. And these are pages of notes on what we need to change to make it better going forward. This is invaluable data. OK, now to the, the raw stats. Lifetime, Nolan has selected 89,285 <laughs> targets in WebGrid. There is no one in the same league. There was one day. February 15th, Nolan selected 762 in one day. For reference, the maximum I think I've ever seen any living creature do is probably pager before that, and it's in the low thousands, like not even close. It's like a multiplier off. Absolutely absurd quantity of data. The total number of left clicks Nolan has done with this BCI, 111,000 left clicks. Right clicks, 35,000 right clicks. Okay, now for the most important stat of all. For those who know me, I'm a very competitive person. Noland is competitive, but shows it in a slightly different way. And I've been playing chess with Noland for the last month, incrementally as his BCI has improved. And I want to be very clear that Noland will destroy me in any fair competition, OK? <laughs> it's not a close contest intellectually. Nolan however, nods. <laughs> Nolan nods. However, when the BCI is not working well enough for him to beat me, and the clock time is small enough, I have a chance. And just for the record, Noland has beaten me seven times in chess and has only lost four times. So he's up three games. Right yeah, now. Better believe it. And then the last two numbers I want to talk about, or maybe just the last number I want to talk about briefly, is the one on the bottom here. And it's, I think, in some ways, the most important metric from the last month. And it's the number of hours of Civilization VI <laughs> played between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. using a BCI. And it's on the order, 7.6 7 hours of Civilization VI played between those hours. And Noah, I guess, do you want to just briefly comment on what that number means? And in terms of your life, your ability to use your BCI to do that versus what was your, the previous alternatives? Do you have any comments you want to share on that? I don't know what you mean. Yeah, maybe just as, as, a, as a reflection, when using your previous assist, assistive technology, things like the mouse stick, oh, yeah. was that a possibility for you? Or did it yeah, like? no, not really. Um, there are a lot of problems that arise with using other assistive technology. Basically what would happen is, say I'm using my mouth stick, and if y'all don't know what a mouth stick is, it's basically just a stick that I hold in my mouth. And I can touch, um, I has a little piece of fabric on the end of it basically, and I can use it to touch like my iPad or something. If I were to use it for that long, I run the risk of getting pressure sores. It is basically impossible because I have to sit in one position for that long, and that is just not how my body works. Y'all might not have seen it today, but at some point you maybe will. I have very bad spasms, I'm very spastic, so my legs will kick, my whole body shifts to one side or the other, and so sitting in one position to use a mouth stick in front of an iPad is next to impossible. I actually had a quad stick, uh, which is basically like a sip and puff. I don't know if y'all know what sip and puffs are. This is a sip and puff where uh, I can control my chair with it. It's like a hard blow to go forward, uh, a soft blow to go right, um, a hard suck to go backwards, and a soft suck to go left. And I have a remote that has about eight or 10 different commands on it. And I have to be perfectly centered in order to use that. And if I spasm at all or move at all, I have to be completely readjusted. Getting to play Civ all night like that was something I haven't been able to do in, well, since my accident. And it was, it was amazing. It was so much fun. I was kicking ass. <laughs> it's, just, it's just not possible with anything else that's out there. I've tried it all, eye tracking software, it's okay, but if you know I get off center at all, it just doesn't work. There are so many different reasons why what y'all are doing is just going to change the world. It's going to change how people like me are able to just live their lives. It's incredible. I can't even describe it. I, I'm at a loss for words at the impact y'all are making. And you know, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. I guess above all else, I had so much fun staying up all night doing that. What civilization were you? What civ? Yeah. I was Korea. I was Korea. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was great. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, beating him at chess isn't that fun anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
it's tough up here, yeah. All right, so I want to just briefly go through a few, at least moments that gave me goosebumps throughout this trial and just talk about at least what they meant for me personally, but also the industry. And if no one you have any comments along the way, please feel free to, uh, to sure. jump in. One, two, three, go. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Right there. Yeah. So this happened one day after surgery. So this is in the ICU, literally probably, I don't know, 12 hours or something after yeah. surgery, not that long after surgery. And yeah, maybe you want to just explain what you're doing in this video? Yeah, y'all put basically different channels up in front of me and I could see certain spikes. And I was just trying to play around with, you know, different movements and imagined movements, attempted movements, just to see if I could see anything. And I was just trying to move my wrist and I noticed a yellow spike and I thought it was super freaking cool. And so I showed them all and they were all really impressed. They clapped for me, which was very unnecessary, but it was awesome. It was really, really cool. Yeah. yeah, it was pretty sweet. Maybe just for people watching, if we play this one more time, the spike is in the upper right corner, right. it's the yeah. third one. It's a yellow, I think it's, it's a yellow, yellow spike, yeah. yeah. I'm not sure I'm gonna have the ability to play it again, but here we go. Whoa. Oh, can you do that again? <laughs> yep, yep. One, two, three, go. Oh, wow. Right there, yep. <laughs> So cool. so cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. And now the next video I want to show is actually a couple of days later, we're at the VRBO that the family rented in Scottsdale doing some initial data collection from the device. And what you'll see in the video, most importantly, is the dog Gracie, who is just an absolute all-star <laughs> dog. But the bigger picture I want to convey with this video is that it's outside. This is by a pool that this research session is happening, where this initial data collection is occurring. And this is something, you know, basically BCI has exited the lab. That's the point of this video. That's so incredible. I just want to give one round of applause to all the people who made that possible, that you can do yeah. that kind of thing outside. All right, the next video I want to show, it's actually, it's a very special moment to me because it's the first time that Nolan is giving, getting control of the computer cursor on the screen. So what you'll see in this video is Nolan actually exiting the calibration experience and getting control of the cursor for the first time. So here we go. Yeah, I think the main point I want to take away from that is just the last comment that Nolan had there. That I think I can do better. It basically summarizes Nolan's, summarizes his work during this entire, entire last month. Okay, the next video I want to just briefly walk through happened actually the same, it happened on the first day of him being able to use his BCI. And I'll play the video and then explain what it is afterwards. So I think the significance of it will be more clear once you've seen the video. Here we go. No, I don't like it. Oh, well done, man. He's a new world record holder. No, I thought it was higher. I thought I would have to get to five or something. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Yeah, so I think this is a remarkable technical achievement, but the thing I want to highlight about this is actually that this happened on like hour seven and a half of that day. And I just want to just call out again, this is not a typical thing to have the kind of determination and grit required to do this. And it's just a remarkable testament to Nolan that on the very first day he had access to this thing, he blew the previous thing out of the water. It's ridiculous. So yeah, one big hand for Nolan. Please. All right, now this next video, this was actually, I think, a request of, of Nolan. During our first initial home visit, the first time I met, I met Nolan, we talked about things he might want to do with his BCI and how one of the games he likes to play, he referred to it as Beer Yo Kart, not Mario Kart, but... It's a much different game. Much different game. <laughs> one of the goals was to be able to actually play the game Mario Kart with his friends. And in this video, I think we posted this at one point on Slack or a version of this, and there was a vote of sort of which of these was controlled by a BCI, which of these was Nolan, and which of these was his dad. And <laughs> I'm not saying anything about his dad's skill set, but in some ways it's kind of like a Turing test for BCI. If you can't tell the difference, this is a remarkable, a re remarkable achievement and again a testament to Nolan's ability to figure stuff out blazingly quick. And I'm going to hold off until the end to say which is which, but here we go. So Nolan was the guy on the right, the one who sniped that dude with the green shell halfway through. And also the guy who I'll mention has the best taste in which player to play as Mario Kart. Try Bowser for the win. I would like to, just really quick, for those of you who don't know what Burio Kart is, so if you've never played, it's Mario Kart, except uh, everyone starts with a beer in hand, and you're not allowed to drink and drive. 
so you have to pull over and drink your beer periodically, and you have to finish it before the end of the race. And that's it. And so I've wanted to play that. It's so much fun if you've never played. I would say we could have a little tournament in the office, but I'm not sure how y'all feel about your employees getting drunk. But it's so much fun. Just, just what's the, to throw what's the winning strategy here? Chug it all. Chug yeah, it all. just yeah. in the beginning. Yeah, shot. Oh, wait, you can't. But you can't drink and drive. You can't. Yeah. So you just stay there. You shotgun it, and then you drive. And ho hopefully, you're not too jacked up to be able to finish the race. But that's it. That's it. It's so much fun. Okay, that's it. Yeah, may maybe we'll have that set up later. Yeah, okay, okay. I'll play you. Yeah. The next video here, it's actually a similar one, just a slightly different perspective. And it means something very uh, personal to me, and I'm guessing to a lot of you, which is why I wanted to put in this deck. What you'll see in the next video is, it's a very normal scene. What you see is a, a dad and his son playing Mario Kart, something I grew up doing all the time with my parents, something I did a lot with my friends growing up and something that wasn't possible until this, this happened. And I just think the normalcy of it contrasted with the absolute absurdity of doing it using a VCI is something to just marvel at and just take in and soak in for a second. So here we go. It still blows my mind that yeah, Yoshi here has been controlled without moving any hand at all. It's just completely using BCI. And then, yeah, the last slide, I just want to return to the message I said at the beginning here, which is that this really, truly is a team effort. I think I'm one of the few people who's got to experience the full, full journey in Arizona with uh, Nolan and his family and just got to see their dynamic, how much they care about each other, and how supportive they are, all are of not just the work we do, but of the impact it's gonna have on the thousands of people that come next. Just one more round of applause for the whole gang. All right, and now I think we're about to jump into Q&A, and so I'm gonna be the first person to ask a question here, and then I'll hand it off to In Young, wherever he is, to come up here and help, uh, help with this. So my first question to you, since Bain is pictured in this image here, you can say whatever you want about him, you're on stage with the cameras and awesome. everything. Awesome, yeah. But I guess my first question to you is, how did you first hear about Neuralink, and what is that Yeah, story? so I don't know if all of you have heard this story. I didn't know what Neuralink was, six months ago. My buddy Bain, after my accident, eight years ago, almost eight years ago, he's a biology major. He ended up working in a neuroscience uh, lab and he got really into everything that y'all are doing. And about you know five months ago, he called me in the middle of the day and he was already kind of slurring his words. So I was like, something, something's <laughs> afoot. And he told me that Neuralink had uh, been approved by the FDA and y'all had opened up human clinical trials and that I should apply for it. I was like, what the hell is Neuralink? Um, tell me about it. And he did. I guess the best part of the story is that he was wasted when he did it. He was drunk and calling me at like noon. And I was like, why the hell are you drinking at noon? I guess he was trying to prepare himself for a wedding that he was going to. I need to test to see how much I can drink before I get drunk. Yeah, it was for science. Yeah. So he sent me through the whole, like, online. We went through the whole application process together. He spelled my name wrong on the application. So there's that. Yeah. And I asked for an Iron Man suit. So any of you out there who can make that happen, come see me. But yeah, it was, it was wild. And after that, basically, every step of the way, I just wanted to be the first person to get interviewed. I was like, they, I was emailed back and they said, you know, choose a slot out of these times and we'll like FaceTime or something. And I chose the earliest one and I did that basically every step of the way. I got up to a hospital, which for some reason was only like two hours away from my house. The site that they had chosen, which was just wild. It was, I'm so lucky. Everything just lined up, the stars aligned for this. It was really crazy how fast everything happened. That day, I think it was, well, September 19th or something like that, and five months later, I was getting brain surgery. So it all happened pretty quickly, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Does that answer your question? Absolutely. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> so we'll open it up to Q&A, scan the QR code there, or you know, if you have a question, raise your hand, and I'll bring the mic over to you. How did your family feel? Yeah about you applying, about you getting further and further along in the application process? How did you communicate to them you know, what, you'd, you know, what you intended to do? And how did, that, how did that happen? Yeah, I've been very open with my parents, my family about this whole process. I told them basically that if they didn't want me to do it, I wouldn't be here. They 
I ran everything by them, but they are the most supportive parents in the world. I don't think y'all understand how rare it is for a family to take on the role they have, to sacrifice so much just to make me comfortable. People in my position don't really get that a whole lot. A lot of families stick them in a home somewhere. They just can't really handle it. Maybe not that they don't want to, but they're just not capable of it. My family, there's not enough words to say how much I appreciate everything they've done for me. And so this whole process, I walked through with them everything that was happening and that could happen. I was very blunt about all of the downsides to a surgery. I mean, it is brain surgery. It was something we talked at length about. And they just wanted to support me in whatever I decided. I thought a lot about this. I thought a lot about, you know, all of the upsides and the downsides. And it was not an easy decision, I'll say. I mean, I wanted to do it from day one once I started hearing about it and I started learning more and more about it. But I definitely took time to step back and evaluate all of you know the the downsides that I could be bringing to my family you know not just not just the health downsides things that could have happened during surgery or afterwards but everything that comes with this which any notoriety that comes with it I'm like I don't care that people know who I am and I don't think my family does either but we have nothing to hide but at the same time it's a lot to ask your family to step into that role and you know it was it was not easy it was not easy and uh, we talked a lot about it but like i said they're so supportive i wouldn't be here without them they deserve all the credit through all of this and i'm just so blessed to have them yeah i hope that answers your question i read the next question from here what does it feel like to move the cursor with your mind it's freaking wild it's it's hard to explain, honestly. So much of what I feel is, is impossible to get others to understand. So like right now, I can feel myself moving my index finger. It's not moving, but I can feel it. I'm doing it and it's, it's just not able to, you know, there's no way for y'all to understand like what that feels like. I can explain it, I can try, but there's just no way. And Seeing that translate onto a screen and being able to move a cursor is just, it's such a wild, wild feeling. It's, it's not being able to explain this to y'all. It's, it's hard, it's very difficult, but then you can see it happening real time on a screen. And so there's a connection there, I feel like. Like I'm, I'm showing people like how amazing this technology is by, I don't know, just thinking, <laughs> that's crazy. I remember when I first got control and I was moving it with my mind. So there's a difference between attempting to move it versus imagining to move it. Attempting, I feel, is kind of cheating. It's probably not, but when I attempt to move something, it does feel like I'm moving it with, say, my hand or my wrist, even though you can't see it. To me, I can feel things in my arm moving around, maybe that you just can't understand, I guess. But when I first moved it just by thinking, it, it blew my mind for a day. Like, I just could not wrap my head around it. It was so cool. It, I can talk at length about this, like what it actually feels like, and y'all come up and ask me as many questions as you want, because this is not an easy thing to answer. It is, it is very, very complicated. What I'm feeling and what I can explain to you, it feels very cool, I'll say that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that probably doesn't answer your question, but it's, it's kind of a very difficult thing to answer. I don't know, sorry. Nolan. Yeah. Sorry, let, I'll let everybody applaud. No, you don't need to, please. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you to you and your family for being here. We, re we really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have a two-part question. First part, is there anything that surprised you about the whole process? Yeah, how fast it was. Y'all move at <laughs> light speed. It, it was crazy. Like, I don't, you don't get, you don't go from applying for something to brain surgery in five months. Like that just doesn't happen, at least not in my experience. It was crazy how fast everything moved. And I think everything was basically set in stone kind of around December 
So that was, you know, three months after I applied. And then there was just a lot of waiting around. I know that the clinical side of things wanted to interview more candidates and see if there was someone that was better than me. Good luck with that. So, but it was, but it was crazy. It was crazy how fast everything moved. It, it just kind of blew my mind. Also just how awesome everyone is. It's not like I was expecting all of you to suck. Like, don't get me wrong. But everyone that I've met has just been so impressive and so amazing. And y'all are so accommodating to me and my family. Every step of the way, it's just been it's been amazing. Y'all should all be, you should be very proud of what you've built here and the people that y'all have chosen to have around. It's just, y'all are among some of the greatest people I've ever met in my life. And like that shouldn't be just kind of glossed over, I guess. Y'all are really incredible. Um, so thank you for everything. So that's part one. What's part two? Thank you. And part two is, you know, you're the first patient to have received one of our devices. What advice would you give to the second patient? And I don't know. We can, you can think about it. We can maybe talk no, about it. No, yeah. It's, it's hard to say. I, going into this, all I ever wanted was to help people. Obviously, there's a lot of upside that comes with this. In, in the consent forms and everything that I signed, basically they flat out say, there's no upside to this. And I'm like, that's a lot of BS. Like, there's a lot of upside. But they basically want me to go in understanding that, you know, anything could go wrong at any moment. And, you know, you could be out of this study at the drop of a hat, basically. So don't, you know, put too much stock in what you're gonna get out of this. It's really hard not to, because I've seen how amazing all of the technology is. I've seen, I don't know, I've glimpsed what the possibilities are. And now it's hard to live any other way. So I would say to the next patient, the next candidate, just to enjoy it as much as possible, because it is, it is so much fun working with y'all. I can't, I can't describe how much fun I've had with Bliss and Nir and you know, Sammy and Beata and Harrison. Y'all coming to my house and just, can I cuss? Am I allowed to do that? Okay. Just like shooting the shit at my house. Like y'all are, it's just so much fun. Like eight hours of work feels like nothing. And I know that y'all might look at me and think, are we pushing him too hard? Like eight hours a day is a lot. It doesn't feel like that. I could keep going and going, and I want to, I really do. I just hope that the next patients appreciate what they're being allowed to be a part of and appreciate the people around them and just have fun because it is a lot of fun. I'm sure all of you will have the chance to do this someday and that'll be, that'll be so much fun. We can play games together. I can beat your ass at chess too. I'm, I'm more than willing to do that you are gluttons for pain. It'll be, I just want people to understand like how lucky they are to be a part of this, just as I've realized how lucky I am. I think that's, that's what I would say. So yeah, part two done. All right, I'll read off one more from the Slido. What are some capabilities you'd like to see in future iterations of the device? Hmm, I mean, I know that there are a lot of things that y'all have planned. So all of that, I mean, the Optimus robot sounds so cool. And I, not just, not just how cool it is, because it is freaking awesome, but at the same time, it'll change specifically quadriplegics' lives. Having a, a full-time nurse is something that is not possible for people like me. I am so lucky that I have my parents, you know, my brother and other people who work with me around the clock, but most people don't have that. And I can just imagine having an Optimus robot as like just someone that's there all the time that can help you with whatever you need. It's, it's gonna, oh my gosh, it's gonna change so many people's lives. It's gonna be amazing. So I would like to see that. I think that's in the works. I mean, it, it'll just be, it'll be crazy. Also, it would be really cool if Optimus can be like a little chauffeur. Like I'm, I'm thinking like, hey, get me one of those cyber trucks and have them just have them like toss me in and have the cyber truck have an eject button. Y'all can, it'll be great just to travel around. I basically have to have a group of people around me all the time to get me to go anywhere. Like I'm from Arizona, if y'all don't know. So like driving up here was a 10 hour drive and I loved it. I didn't mind, but the people around me, not so much. Like the people driving, sorry, David. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but imagine having like self-driving car and a, an, an ability to get in the car and have someone get you out and stuff. If I could do all of that without needing other people, just everything that improves, you know, independence, quality of life, it's, I can, I can just see the possibilities and I know that for me already it's been amazing, but I know where this can go. 
and it's going to keep going, and y'all are going to keep busting your asses, and I know that because I've met so many of you, and I'm just so impressed. And y'all think that like the amount of data that I've collected and the amount of work I've put in is impressive, but I don't think it is a drop in the bucket to what y'all have done. And I know that you're going to keep pushing. Like it's, it's just going to keep growing and growing exponentially, and what is possible is going to, it's just going to keep expanding, and y'all are going to keep changing people's lives, and it's going to be amazing. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's about it. I don't know how you did this, but I think you did tap into Elon's master plan, which is, you know, when you can imagine a future where you buy a Tesla, it comes with an Optimus robot yeah. that has a SpaceX, you know, rocket engine <laughs> attached to it that you can control the chauffeur with yeah. Neuralink and plan going through a bunch of tunnels. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I've I mean, thought, that that's the vision, right? I mean, I, I've thought that if this all works out, I mean, it would it would benefit Elon to put me on Mars. If I, could, if I could control like an army of Optimus robots, that's way better than anything y'all could do. Like I would, be, I would be so useful. Elon, if you're seeing this, man, hit me up. Yeah, that's kind of a joke, but not really. Yeah, I guess you can come. I won't need you if I have all those Optimus robots. I'm just joking. I'm just joking, mom. I love you. Anyone else? Hi, I'm Alex. I'm on the robotics team here. Hey, Alex. I'm Nolan. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. In the Speaking to your recovery after surgery, the in the days after that, were there any parts of that that were particularly difficult or any parts that you expected to be hard that were easier than you thought they would be? Yeah, brain surgery was easy, man. Like, I, I was expecting a much longer recovery time, and they kicked me out of the hospital like a day later. I was like, are y'all sure? Like, <laughs> like, you don't need to keep me for observation or anything? And they're like, no, you're good. Like, put some, put some, you know, aquaphor. like, aquaphor, that's what it is. Put some aquaphor on it, you'll be fine don't wear hats for a while. It's like, okay, like, that's fine. It really sucked not being able to wear a beanie for two weeks. Outside of that, like, that was the hardest thing I experienced, honestly. It was so easy. I don't know. I just expected it to be way, mm, I don't say more invasive, because you know, it's brain surgery. I don't know how much more invasive could you get, but it just did not seem like that. I went into that surgery, two hours later I was out, I was drugged up on, you know, anesthesia for a couple hours, and after that, I was ready to go. It kind of sucked not being able to use the BCI to its full capacity early on. I think we had to wait like 10 days for it to charge, for me to be allowed to charge it. So all of our sessions were like, I don't know, an hour or something like that, and that sucked. Like, I was ready to go, like day one out of surgery. It just wasn't that bad. So anyone that's thinking about getting this, do it. It was so easy. Hey, Nolan, Michael from Microfab. We met earlier, you could see mine like oh, Hey, what's up, Michael? Yeah, hey. How you doing? What would you say to the critics? Like the people who say what we're doing isn't novel or what we're doing is dangerous, what would you say to them? Mm, what do they know? I mean, look at me. Do, do I look sick or outside of my handicap? Do I look disabled in any way? Did it, did it you know, affect my ability to tell awesome jokes. Fun little story, I know I shouldn't have done this. Right out of surgery, I, my, the first time I saw my mom, she walked in and I looked at her and I was like, who are you? She was not happy about that. It, it lasted about three seconds. She looked at the doctors and was like, what did you do? I was like, I'm just kidding, mom. I'm still paying for that, I think. But I mean, it, it was, I've heard a lot of people say a lot of bad things about it. I mean, I was on, you know, X for five minutes at one point, looking at people call me the Antichrist and stuff. It's, it's funny because they just don't know. They don't know how amazing this technology is, how little, like, how little recovery time it took, just how easy the whole process was. I mean, granted, maybe because I'm P1, everything was just so smooth. Y'all freaking move mountains when you need to, and that's amazing. But this is just, it's such amazing technology and it was so simple that I feel like this thing should be out on the market today. I know y'all have a lot to do and there's a lot of improvement to come, but like after that surgery and after that first day, I broke that world record and you know continued to break it like every day for a week straight and just kept climbing. Like they should have looked at that data and been like, all right, like 
that's enough. We can stop the study now. That's, that's how I feel, at least, and how much it's helped my just life already, like my quality of life. Like, I freaking played Civ for seven hours one night. That was awesome. Like, I would never be able to do that otherwise. And sure, like, we're still working out the kinks and stuff, but once we get this figured out, like, it's, there's no reason for it not to be out there, I don't think, at all. Maybe y'all know something I don't, but for the most part, I think, like, no one should be afraid of this. I wasn't. I mean, I, the amount that y'all put my mind at ease even before the surgery was incredible. I was not worried even going into the surgery. I was just excited to get to work, honestly. You know, like, just get over it, you know? Yeah. Does that answer your question? I, yeah, for sure. All right. So do you feel the implant in any way? Yeah, I mean, we have whole conversations together. Sorry, that's a bad joke. People are gonna think I'm actually crazy. No, a little bit. I mean, I can feel it when people bump up against it or something. There are certain things that I can feel, you know, I don't know, it's hard to describe. I mean, there's something in your brain. You can feel it a bit, but not as much as I would have thought. I would have thought it was just a feeling that you'd have constantly and it just doesn't go away. I mean, I'd, I'd read a lot, of the, a lot of the negative stuff about this before the surgery, about you know, all the terrible things that y'all were putting the monkeys through and how awful it was, you know, monkeys like picking out their implant and rubbing it on the ground and all sorts of stuff that just, after talking with the, with the monkey people today, I realized how just wrong all of that is. I'm glad I asked because now anyone that asks me about it, I can just say, y'all are a bunch of idiots. Like, those monkeys are taken care of. They get better treatment than I do. I've been, I've been asking since day one for banana smoothie, and I still haven't gotten it. So, just like to throw that out there, guys. But outside of that, I don't, yeah, I don't feel it at all, really. Like, very, very minimum impact on my life or anything. Yeah, it, yeah, I think that's about it. <laughs> All right, we'll wrap with these last two questions. Was there some particular wow moment of amazement that you experienced that you didn't expect at all after all the discussions and implant early trials? Hmm, yeah, there were a few. Going into the surgery, I expected it to be, they told me anywhere from three to six hours. And I don't know if y'all know, it was like under two, which was just wild to me, how just smooth everything went. So that was pretty awesome. I mean, when I first actually moved the cursor with my mind, it, it, like I said, it blew my mind for a whole day. I just could knock it over it. I mean, there was like, I knew that this is what the plan was, I guess. I knew that this was the whole goal of it, but I was like, okay, but how real is this? Am I actually gonna be able to control something with my mind? And when I did, I was like, all right, <laughs> sounds good to me. It was really, really cool. That was a pretty big wow moment. Yeah, I don't know. Playing Mario Kart and coming in second like repeatedly kind of blew my mind. I didn't think that would be possible like a week into having it. It was like two weeks, I think, but a week into using it, that was freaking wild. Even though my dad and my buddy wouldn't let me win, I took second and not first because they're brutal. My family is just way too competitive. But I mean, we went from, I don't know if y'all know, from what's the lowest, like 50 CC. And I was like my first time using it, I didn't come in last and I expected to came in like 11th, and then every game after that I moved up. It was like 11th and 8th and 6th and then 2nd, like over and over again. And then we moved up to the 100cc and I came in 2nd again. It's just this should not be possible this soon. The fact that I was breaking records on like day one, that just blew my mind. I didn't think that was possible. Whoever held those records before me is probably pissed. Sorry. <laughs> so yeah, there were, I mean, there's, the whole thing has been kind of like a wow moment, honestly. It's hard to pick one, but it's just been so much fun. Yeah, I think that's it. All right, and the last question, what's a simple, small thing that BCI enabled you to do that you really enjoyed? I mean, I don't know if you all would call playing Civ simple or small, but when I was able to play that that weekend, I think I played it like two nights in a row, seven hours one night, like another few hours, four or five the next. That, that was just, it was so cool. I obviously really enjoyed that. I spent freaking like 10 hours doing it one weekend. Something I never thought I would be able to do again. I tried playing safe a few times since my accident and like my buddies can tell you that it it's just a couple hours maybe tops that I was able to do it 
and it was frustrating the entire time. Being able to play it for so long like that and being able to play it like while I was in bed, not needing any help from anyone, not needing to be adjusted, not needing to ask, you know, my parents or my brother to get up in the middle of the night and come, you know, help me out. Being able to play it past the time they went to bed was just, it. it's life changing, it really is. It makes, it makes being, it's gonna sound kind of crazy, but it makes being paralyzed really not that bad. I, I mean, I think I have a really easy life. I just lie around and people do things for me, which is, you know, pretty nice. Um, you know, anything that makes me more independent, I'm all for. And this is, you know, probably going to make people like me the most independent that they might ever be until it all gets cured. And I think that's a very real possibility. I know where this is going. And it's gonna, like, like just thinking about someone say breaking their neck or or you know dislocating their neck going into a hospital and two days later like getting surgery getting an implant something two days later walking out like that is just it's such a real possibility now and that it makes me like so happy that other people don't have to go through this like it's you know it's everything i could have ever asked for and to be a part of it and to be helping in some way, to be able to, I don't know, be useful in some way, it, it completely changed how I live. I mean, I don't know, y'all might not uh, feel this way because y'all stay up super late doing work anyways, but I've, I've heard that people who stay up late at night, it can be a sign that they don't want to, they don't have anything to look forward to the next day. And that's basically how I lived for eight years. And since I started doing all this, I'm in bed by 9, 10 p.m. I'm waking up at 6, 7 in the morning, just excited for the next day. And that's something that I never thought would happen to me ever again. So y'all have given me like a purpose. And it's outside of everything else that I've been able to do, it's more than I could ever ask for. So thank you guys. Thank you so much.